Hey guys, it's Rhea. And I'm Gabby. And this is So True Bestie, the world's first ever podcast created by two best friends. Can you believe it? I'm shocked. Today is a very special episode because it's not about us, which is unfortunate, yeah. but it's about you, the viewers, the viewers, the fans, the friends, the listeners, the comrades. <clears throat> it's about gossip. My favorite thing. The absolute best thing in the world. And if you're Hispanic or you know Spanish, you know chisme is the word to describe gossip. Chisme to me is a way of life. It is how you communicate with each other. I love that, honestly. I think I consider myself a chismosa. You consider yourself a chismosa. And I think it makes us like more well-rounded people. Like we're funnier. We are better listeners because we're always listening out. Yes. For the chisme. And I actually will go as far as to say that people who do not like chisme are hiding something or they don't, they, they just, they don't have friends. Yeah. They're boring. They're boring. Somebody was like, I just don't like to gossip. You know, like if you guys are going to do that, can you like go into another room? Suck my nuts. Also, we're not talking about harmful gossip here. We're talking about harmless. Did you hear that? Da da da. Da 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 da. Yeah. Gossip can be a victimless crime. I it's agree. not always, but it can be. If you're saying it in a safe space, if you're telling people it's not going to get back to, you have to tell gossip about one person in a group that it has nothing to do with them. Yes. That they will never. I love to tell gossip that has to do with people that I met in Texas, in LA. That's a victimless crime. Yes. If I have something to say about somebody in Wisconsin, I'm telling my friends in LA. And it's never going to get back. So who cares? It's an enriching community experience. Yes. So today we have some callers. So yeah, on Instagram, we asked you guys to send us your juiciest bits of gossip if you wanted to share. We had a bunch of you submit. Thank you so much. We're going to be doing this again. I think we're going to probably do this every, you know, five or six episodes. Um, and we picked our favorite stories and had you guys call in and share them. And we're just going to sit back and listen and let you guys do the talking today. I love that. Are you ready to get into it? I am. Let's fucking do it. So basically, um, I moved to Los Angeles four years ago and, you know, it was pretty green, pretty fresh. And the first girl I started dating, we met at a concert. I was throwing a concert and she was uh, working the concert. And so we had to kind of coordinate. She was really cool. Very, very beautiful. Like way, obviously like way out of my league. And, um, so we ended up hanging out and dating and the second or third time we ever hung out she texted me and she goes hey do you want to go on a adventure and i was like of course she Not pulls bad. up to my house in a brand new at the time like 2021 2022 g-wagon and i was like yo who's whose whip is this like whose car is this and she's like she got it like Get. that exactly she 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 goes, get in the car. I have to tell you something. And I'm like, what? And she goes, well, um, so I lied to you about my job. Um, my boss runs all of the high stakes, illegal cash only poker games for celebrities in Los Angeles. And we have to go pick what? up a hundred. We have to go pick up $150,000 right now in the desert. <laughs> not that being the adventure. Yeah. Not her wording it as, do you want to go on an adventure? It's yeah. Really just an errand for her boss. <laughs> so, I mean, I looked at her and I thought we were Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I was like, let's go. Let's fucking do this. <laughs> You're romanticizing it. Oh, I was I was all in. I, 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 she was so interesting. She was so cool. Still is. She's awesome. But like, well, no, actually not. She was pretty mean. But um, we uh, so we go about an hour outside the city. We park in a strip mall parking lot. She goes, all right, I'm going to go get the money. She walks into an Italian restaurant. I am not lying. She walks into an, like an Italian restaurant, comes out, two duffel bags. One of them has $100,000 in cash. The other one has $50,000 in, in like Vegas style poker chips. And I was like sitting there with the most money I had ever seen on my lap. And I was like, oh my God, this is insane, right? So then the pandemic hits and she uh, says, hey, my boss is really, really scared of COVID and I need to move in with him. Uh, he doesn't want me to get me sick. And so immediately, right, I'm like, this is a red flag, right? He's like, you know, mid-30s, late-30s guy. He has a family and a wife, but she starts living with him, and he wouldn't let her leave the house, so she would have to sneak out to walk her dog to hang out with me. And for her birthday... I, I have a quick question. Was yes, of course. 
she the only employee of his? Only employee. Oh shit. He was yeah, writing okay. he was writing a book for Dan Blazerian at the time. If you guys know him, he's like a very like kind of like famous oh, we, we bad know him. yeah, just not a great not a great guy, I think. Um respectfully and uh the red flag is is crimson it's crimson it's crazy so there comes a day where it's her birthday and he doesn't want her to see anybody so he makes her build a bubble for her friends to come see her on the outside and i come and obviously we're dating right so i stay kind of later than her friends and he comes out and he starts yelling at me and he's like who the fuck is this and i was like bro i don't even know you whatever so i left and then um so then one day, final part of the story, sorry for, thank you for listening. Um, one day she goes, hey, I have to go to Vegas to pick up a bunch of money. Do you want to come with me? And then when the time comes, she was supposed to pick me up. I call her. She doesn't answer. And then like 30 minutes later, she's like, oh, by the way, I'm already on my way to Vegas. I can't pick you up. He put a tracker in the car. So if I go off the path, what? he'll know. And I was like, honestly, guys, I was like, yo, this is a risk respectfully this is like an abusive relationship just professionally speaking and um she would always plan to facetime me but then she'd be like oh i have to meet with my boss and she'd facetime me like two hours later it'd be like 12 at night she'd be like just getting out of the shower and i was just like never accusing anybody of anything but when i told my female friends this story they were like yeah she was definitely sleeping with him man you got got and i was, I was like say, yeah. was this was this potentially her pimp I don't want to use that word. I think she was gainfully employed and, and doing, you know, yeah, various. She, she, she had a she had a ten ninety nine. I think so. I think there was paperwork involved. But she had a ten ninety nine. But yeah, all of that together was just, it was just so many red flags and so insane. And I and I eventually, you know, had to uh, had to end things. And she was of so course. So you so you ended it. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Where is she now? Do we know? She, oh man, see, I don't want to. What is that loca up to? She, uh, I think she works in film production now. She got out of it when she quit the job. She called me, like crying and. Good for her. Did yeah. she want to get back together? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. I, I think she was just, I, I don't think so. I think I, I, I think I liked her a little bit more than she liked me at the time, you know. That's but a crazy story. Yeah, it was, it was insane. It was just crazy. It was crazy. All of like the crazy. She'd be like, all right, my boss is leaving right now. Like, I'm going to walk the dog. Like, come meet me at the top of the, the the neighborhood and let's walk together. And then she would just all – it was just crazy. And then when I would try to give her advice, I'd be like – she'd be like, well, what do you know? You're not a millionaire. Like, he's a millionaire. I think he kind of had What do you career. know you're not a millionaire is yeah. the craziest roast of a boyfriend I've ever heard. I know. And honestly, I was like, facts, girl. You know? I was like, I got you. Facts. <laughs> I wasn't even I wasn't even heated. I was like, you know what? You got me there. Oh, this is the craziest thing she ever said to me. We were arguing one time or no, we were not arguing one time. We were speaking. Oh, my God. If she hears this, she's going to know. I'm so sorry. But actually, yeah, God, this is bad. We were we were we were arguing one time and I was saying how I didn't like this movie that Timothy Chalamet was in. And she looked at me and she was like, yeah, I slept with Timothy Chalamet. She was like, I hooked up with him. <laughs> And I was like, I was like, man, again, you got me. I was like, you can't, you, you, you kicked it with old Tim Shablagoo. I can't even, I can't even blame you. Can I ask what movie you didn't like? Uh, I thought the movie A Beautiful Boy was a little uh, privilege based when it comes to talking about addiction, you know? I actually have heard that take. I don't think that's like a necessarily extremely hot take. Yeah, but also some people like it, and I, you know. It's, but it was definitely a movie where I was, I was like, so what is it? You can just, if your parents can send you to rehab 44 times, like you're good. Like, what is this movie about? <laughs> also, I love the idea of you being like, oh, you know, I recently saw this movie and uh, I didn't love it. And she goes, really? Cause I fucked the main character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think she, I think, oh man, I hope she, oh, good God. I think she had maybe worked on the movie in production or something like that. I think she was around, but, um, yeah, but hey, it's okay. I can't it's all good. this woman is a villain or my personal hero. I honestly... I, I, it's, I, I had an amazing time with her and I thought she was brilliant and, you know, maybe, uh, yeah. And now you have a story out of it. I love that. Yeah. Great story. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. Honestly, that is such a good piece of self gossip. And I thank you so much for sharing that with us. Of course. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Bye guys. That was a crazy story. Yeah. That was wild. I mean, it's a very... 
this this story I think is going to be particularly exciting to people who don't live in LA because it's a very LA story. That is so true. Um, and it is so juicy. I can't wait to hear the next one now. This is also a really good example of like a good gossiper because he like told the whole story, you know, very detailed, but never like talked shit. Was very much like this person was great. Like, you know, they're doing their own thing. Maybe it's not my thing, but no hard feelings. And I love that. And it was about himself, which yeah. I actually respected. I did too. I love that. You ready for the next one? I, I so am. Let's do it. Okay. So basically something weird happened between me and my cousin. Um, my cousin, like we'll just say her name is Melissa, is maybe like three or four years younger than me. And I think like any kind of like younger, older sister sort of dynamic, she is always emulated me to some extent, you know, like how I dressed my personal style, the music I was into books, I was reading, etc, which is like all super normal, healthy yeah. stuff. Right, totally normal. This is starting um, at like what age? Oh my god, I want to say since I was like, like 12, maybe wow. 10. So you're the you were like, kind of like that older sister vibe of like, I want to be like her. Yeah. Yeah. It. And it was the dynamic is a little bit. So just like a little more backstory, like her and her family actually moved to the US when she was maybe like six, I want to say. So there was also sort of like that dynamic too. Whereas like I had been in the US, I was born in the US. Um, so I was kind of like, I'm the only person in my entire family to be born in the US. So it gets, it's like more, even more complicated than just like a younger and older sister kind of dynamic, right? Yeah, definitely. Like there's, right. So I'm like, kind of like, I have, I am like totally American to her when mm -hmm. she first got here. That was a long time ago though. And like a lot of, I mean, this like older and younger sister dynamic, like super common, like that's just like having any kind of younger sibling, right? Yeah. Of course, especially at that age. Exactly. Um, the weird thing though, like as you get older, I, f I do feel like when you start meeting like more and more people and you start kind of like coming into your own and growing into the person you are, the that sort of like need to or like impulse to kind of like emulate others or even like mimic others, it fades away because like you grow into an identity, you create your own identity, right? Right. Um, the weird thing is though, like it never, I, f I feel like my cousin emulating me, it never stopped. And at some points, like even especially with social media um, and just like having like access to everyone at all times, I feel like it got worse. Um, Whoa. I feel like it got worse. It has gotten progressively worse actually as we have gotten older. Wait, and, like in, what, in what ways? Can you give some examples? Yes. So like when I first got a little bit weirded out about how, where this was going was when I was in college. So in my senior year of high school, I had to put together this like senior thesis for, for high school. And I wrote this like giant paper on Korean cuisine and I designed and shot and um, developed this cookbook for like Korean and American dishes, like Korean fusion, if you will. This was when like Roy Choi had first started Kogi. So it was like the <laughs> Korean taco was all the rage. Yeah, I'm dating yeah. myself. Yes. Um, and I, on the cover of it, I had um, myself in a McDonald's, like picking up a hamburger with chopsticks. And it was called American um, Born Confused. That was the title of this That's cookbook. Cute. That's a cute little book. And it's so, it was so cute. It was like, oh my God, it's like when I, still one of my favorite projects and I did it when I was 17. Love it. You know, fast forward maybe a year, a few years later, actually, at this point I was in grad school. I go on Facebook and I see that my cousin um, posted one of her projects that she did in college. And it was of her friend in a kimono holding um, a McDonald's, a, like a package of McDonald's fries. You're lying. And I was so weirded out. I know this is, it sounds awful to say that I was weirded out, but like. No, I'd be weirded out too. Yeah. It's, it's such a, it's so specific. It's so specific. And it's not like, it's not like my cousin reached out and was just like, Hey, like, I'm gonna like 
be exactly. pulling a ton from your project. Like it wasn't like that. And it wasn't like my cousin didn't know this cookbook existed. In fact, um, my aunt, her mom, like helped me develop the recipes. I was at their house working on it. Like they were very aware of like what I had done. Wait, so the aunt is now getting in on the stealing? No, there's no way. There's no way. Okay. There's no way. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like going conspiracy theory vibe with yeah. it. Yeah, no, you're like, no, there's multiple villains. Um, No, there's no way. And like, it wasn't, and like, look, like if my cousin had been like, hey, like had been like told me, um, then it wouldn't have been as weird. Like, oh yeah, rip this, like swipe. Right. There's, the there's a way she could have been like, hey, I was super inspired by this. Like I want to rip it a little. Absolutely. Swipe the whole thing. Um, But no, it wasn't. And I was like staring at it for so long. And I reached out to my friends and they're like, dude, just say something. Like, just say something. I'm just like, no, like, it's not a big deal. I don't want to say any, I'm like literally a grad, like I'm in grad, I'm getting my master's. Like, I'm not going to be talking about a senior project from high school. It just felt so silly at that moment, but shit just started compounding. And when I say that, it's like at some points, like her Instagram stories, seemed so similar to mine and again I know I'm talking about like senior projects from high school and Instagram stories but the kids no, no, no. this is all extremely valid these little points add up and when you start clocking them everything feels so aligned and connected exactly and it sounds I like truly sound like I have like string on my walls like connecting like photos and shit and like <laughs> all of it but like all these conspiracy Siri theories like weaving together but seriously once you start noticing it and I once I started flagging it like everything it all everything kind of was rising to the surface at this point though I still wasn't like talking about it with my partner I wasn't really talking about it with my friends um but the way my cousin would speak her whole internet persona seemed very close to mine um and that made me so uncomfortable and then also but at this even So like we were still growing as friends. We were even with all of this, like we were still growing as friends. And I really love that. Like, um, but things like she would ask me, you know, where I got my shoes from and I would just like send her the link. I'd be like, dude, they're so fucking comfortable. Like everyone needs these, you know, like she would ask me like what my skincare routine was. And I'd be like, I do this, this, and this, this, in this order, blah, blah, blah. And then we, all these things and like, but like she would just, and then she did all of them to the point where we went on um, a trip together, just me and her. And I was really excited about this because I was like, okay, like now she'll see that I'm like a real person, right? Like not just some like influencer online or like some distant person online that she like can like beat for beat kind of draw inspiration from. Like I'm just right. a real last person, you know, I'm like her friend and maybe we'll grow closer and she'll kind of like realize that it's weird to be doing this um I you guys so many of our outfits looked exactly the fuck the same no not the Mary Kate and Ashley the Mary like Mary Kate and Ashley to the point where I was we're just like I was like why why do you have the same bucket hat bitch like what's going on (laughs) like we don't need matching hats not matching hats like that's just (laughs) a beat too far surely there this is weird to you too Well, that's the thing is there's like an aspect like there have been multiple times where like I have either like sent somebody the link to buy something that I have or I've received a link and there's an aspect of being like, okay, there have been like we've swapped so many similar things. If we're going on vacation together, I'm not going to bring those because like there's a chance they will bring it because they're the one who put me on to it. Like there's it feels like there was no sense of even like trying to like hide this. No, not at all. And then like. She would make comments though that were like, oh my God, it's so crazy. Like we have even the same shoes. And I'd be like, yeah, well, I I sent you the link. I know. And I was like, dude, I literally sent you these sandals, literally sent you them. And then stuff like that where I was just like, oh shit, does she not know? I would feel like I'm going crazy. I absolutely, I still do. I'm still like, I'm still questioning whether I am the crazy one. And then like other stuff like, I'd be like, oh my God, your skin looks so good. And she was like, dude, I've been doing this. And it's just like, she would literally repeat the skincare tips and tricks that I had just told her. 
Oh my God. Wait, okay. So I know how immigrant families are. Is this a topic of gossip within your family? I mean, short answer, yes. Of um, course. Of course it is. Like my mom, she had like she only has two other sisters. Like the three of them are in a group chat like all day, right? Well, first of all, I need to tell you how this became family gossip and lore. Because things actually progressed and kind of came to a head about a year ago, I want to say. So we go on this trip together. First of all, the vacation, the two of us, it's amazing. We're closer than ever. It's fantastic. The whole trip went so beautifully. Um, we we're like planning all these like future trips together and like saying like how we're just having a ton of like deep heart to heart moments as like true friends. Oh, Not that's nice. It's so nice. And like, I think like I, I mean, I think back on that trip, like I just, I think about it like with like, I have such fond memories. But it's also kind of like you're hanging out with yourself at that point, huh? Oh my God, dude. <laughs> yes. I love to hang out no. with myself. Like I'd, I'd have a great trip too. <laughs> right? Like, of course we vibed. Of course we vibed. We're the same person. And us in like two matching hats, like riding horseback together. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> um, and then, however, like after the trip, she texts me a picture of a tattoo and is like, I did a thing. Oh I open it and I did a thing. Yeah. First of all, that, that was the first offense. Second, the tattoo. I'm looking at my phone. I feel the blood rush from my face. Oh my God. My mouth goes completely dry because the picture of that tattoo she sends me is very, very similar to the same tattoo that I have in the same place on my back. Same spot and everything? It's maybe, I don't know, a few inches above where I have it on my back. What is it? It's a flower. It's a, it's kind of some kind of like, uh, almost looks like a cherry blossom-ish. It's like the South Korean flower. It, the placement is so specific. It's like on like my left back like flank area. Yes, it's not like the ribs or like the mid back where everybody has a tattoo. No, it's like kind of in a weird area that okay. doesn't. And it's like, there's no shading. It's like totally flat. It's like not a, it's not a style. Like I guess now it exists like with like sticker style and stuff. But like, it's not. It's very, very specific, I would say. It's not something that's like floating around online. And she There's obviously ripped it. She's seen it. She saw it when I first got it when I was like 20 years old, my first tattoo, um, when I got it abroad. Like she's ve- like she's seen it before. And like I let it just sit for a really long time. I did not respond for a really long time. I think I was just like, haha, it looks like mine. Like, that was the best I could do at that point. Because what? Like, the alternative is to just, like, go... Go in. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you handled that well because, yeah, it was the the best choice given the situation. Yeah, the alternative is, like, a three-paragraph text about everything you've clocked and being, like, you're a psychopath. The alternative was that, like, I put together an actual deck, like, an actual PowerPoint presentation. And to go... It looks like mine kills me. Wait, what was the response? The first line, I like, I won't read the whole thing, but she goes, oh, I can see how they look similar. For me, they're pretty different in their style and placement, question mark, but I get why you might feel otherwise. And then she was saying like how she designed hers with her artists and blah, blah, blah. That's, that's somebody who knows that they copied you and is trying to write like a wordy thing to make you seem like you're the crazy one for thinking that it would be similar. Oh my God. Like giving you just enough validation to be like, I guess I see what you mean. It's very, it's honestly, she gaslights like a man. Bro. I mean, that's where we learn it from, to be honest. That's the way, that's the way like a guy would be like, I can see how you'd be uncomfortable with this thing I did. But to be honest, you know what I mean? Like they give you just enough to not seem crazy. And then at the end of the text message, she's like, not sure if it's bothering you or not, but I didn't mean to try to copy yours or your design at all. I'm sorry if it is coming off that way. And then the part that kills me, and this is just me being mean, is like she put like a sideways face, like the um, like not the emoji, but like the colon and then slash. She <laughs> colon slashed you. Here's the thing, you guys. Here's the thing. So like that, 
like to some people would be like an admission that like something kind of that she did something weird like subconsciously or not like something kind of like off definitely happened yes the real okay but then I guess I have to share my response which was I just liked the text message like I heard of it which love. I love your choice in handling this so far. I have no notes. Oh my God. You would say that. What does Gabby say? No, I agree because your other option would have been to just fucking ruin her. Yeah. You have to either like call it out in a funny way or you go in. And I think going in like at the end of the day, this is family. This isn't like some like friend you made on off like Instagram, like this right. is family. So I feel like you actually, there is no other way I can see you would have handling it. And she can deny it all she wants. Like she can deny all these things. But at the end of the day, this is a smart girl. She knows what she's doing. And now she knows that you know what she's doing. I remember like when all, before even the tattoo, like before we even had gone on the trip together, this was, things were sort of coming to a head. And like now, like my friends were pointing it out to me. And like my partner was kind of pointing it out to me, like how, like the similarities were just like kept popping up, popping up even at, like as we were growing closer and it, it was definitely bothering me but I just kept wanting to give her the benefit of the doubt but I remember like she was visiting came over to my house and I noticed that we were standing the exact same way like leaning it up against the counter my counter this and so I quickly, you. I, yeah and I so I quickly changed my posture and she she matched me she mirrored oh. it's it, she's mirroring me yeah that almost is borderline like actually feels mentally ill well, that's what I, I'm like, what if this is not, she's not aware of it. That's like kind of what I was sort of clinging to. Like, oh, like it's just her like trying, like subconsciously marrying me. Then the tattoo really, for lack of a better way of describing this, like it did freak me out. It freaked yeah, me out. Of course. And then nothing, you guys. We have not spoken since. And it's been over a year. It's been over a year. Let me actually find. Has she still been copying you? I have no idea. Um, we She follows me still on Instagram. I'm going to be honest. I did mute her. <laughs> just for, your so own, I, for your own, for your own peace, yeah, I feel like, exactly, right? Exactly. Because I'm just like, if I, maybe if I just don't see this, then it doesn't exist. How about that? No, but, she, you guys haven't talked because she is now aware that you know what she's doing. I, I agree. It's like there is an, there is like this this theory that she doesn't know, but then why would she just also stop stop talking to you? No idea. So we have not spoken. This was, I shit you not, May 2022. <laughs> a year and a half. Oh my God. A year and a half. Because you know what? This just reminded me. Me and Rhea just went to the flea and we showed up wearing the same thing. Imagine if we stopped talking after that I, moment. That'd be crazy. The only reason if we would have stopped talking is if one of us had felt like they had been caught doing something. But because it was so innocent and natural, it, I don't even like remember what we were wearing, to be honest. Like you guys, The fact you, that this became such a thing that you guys were literally becoming best friends, you vacationed together and then never spoke again. I'm like, there is no way that she didn't feel some level of like caught or shame. Right. A part of me is like, could I just reach out and be like, hey, I want things to stop being weird. And then it's not. I don't know if that's the case. Like, I, I don't know. I think she's far gone. I think the girl with the flower tattoo is far gone. Oh my god! Which one? The girl with the flower <laughs> the, the second, the second one. Oh my god! Wait, my question is: Do you guys not? You guys live? You, does she, does she live in the same city as you? No, no. So we don't see each other, and like, okay, yeah. There's no occasion. There would be no occasion that we would see each other. Like, and there's your mom no... still talks, and your mom still talks to your aunt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're they're sisters. They're great, but like I do know that they're aware of it, and like my because um, like my cousin, she has like a younger sister, and I guess um the younger sister has brought it up with her mom, my aunt, who then brought it up with my mom and said, "Oh, I think something's going on between them." Something, but, but it, but from what you know, they don't know details. I don't think so I honestly oh, how are you I would have sang like a canary to my mom I would have been like this bitch is copying me oh okay so I did I said everything to my mom like exactly how as I'm telling you yeah and 
my mom's response, bless my mom's heart, is like, oh my God, this like is what celebrities must feel like when we when we like when we look to them for trends. I'm just like, I I wouldn't know, mother. Like I I am your daughter, not a celebrity. Like this is so real for me. Um Yeah, this is like family. This isn't yeah. like a random girl from Ohio. It literally. And so I think she does think it's silly, but understands why I feel uncomfortable. But yeah. it's she's not like getting in the middle of it at all. Like she's, I think she thinks it'll shake out as it's meant to. And I think if I told my mom that we're still not talking, it would be very surprising to her. So I'm just pretending like, uh, that's not happening and just kind of compartmentalizing it. But yeah, I fear you lost a cousin. Okay. I do have a final question to ask. Have you at any point in the past year and a half creeped and have you looked at her Instagram even once to see if she's still copying you? No. That is a level of self-control I can't even comprehend. I was about to say, you're brave. Yeah, no. I will say, though, I recently started getting into, like, Pilates and Legree and kind of, like, posting about it online, like, how fucking hard it is and, like, posting on every class and blah, blah, blah. Like, it's, like, so fun to try something new, like, da-da-da. And um, my friends, like, still follow my cousin online. And they're like, you do know that your cousin has started um, teaching Pilates, right? (laughs) And I was like, nope, I don't, I had no idea. And it could totally be like confirmation bias, like this whole thing up until the tattoo could have just been like, you know, we're the same backgrounds. Like we follow the same people online. We're looking at the same shit. But I think the fact that like she never reached back out you know, I, I don't know. There's, there's weirdness. As a woman, I feel like you should always trust your gut first and foremost. And my second point is I've never met two more Siamese people than me and Rhea. And I have never felt like we were jocking each other's style, the way we are anything. So this to me is like, Oh, it's a purposeful thing. She got caught and she's embarrassed by it and now doesn't talk to you, but still doesn't have a personality herself. So she's going to continue this. Yeah. And in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if she was even going harder because now she doesn't feel like you're clocking her. Oh my God, stop. <laughs> like she's, why would she, why would she stop now? She's not even getting in trouble anymore for it. No, there's no way. I really hope, I hope she like, she's learned from it. Like in fact, in fact, she's leveled up. You're taking Pilates class. She's the one teaching them. You're gonna, yeah. go Pil- you're, gonna you're gonna go into yes. a Pilates class. She's gonna be the instructor. Yeah, I she's like, it's not buy- enough to copy anymore. I have to be better. <laughs> I need to buy a studio. I need to buy a Pilates exactly. studio. It's the exactly. only way. Honestly, that was like one of the best gossip stories I've ever heard in my life. So thank you so much for calling in and sharing your story. It was honestly yes. amazing. I was enthralled the whole time. Oh my God. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for, yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Seriously. I feel, I do feel lighter. And if there's any other updates, I'll be sure to call Please in. Please call in. That story, my mouth was open the entire time. Yeah, absolutely. That is shocking. And also it's like, One thing that stuck out to me was I felt bad because I felt like she kept being like, maybe I'm just like up my own ass. Like maybe I'm not like, no, you know, when somebody is copying you, there's a difference between somebody who also does trends, who also does things and somebody who is blatantly ripping your shit. I agree. I'm actually not a fan of imitation is the best form of flattery. I actually disagree. It's annoying and I'll kick your ass. (laughs) Have you ever had somebody copy you? Yes. And it was so annoying because it was one of those situations where it was like, it felt like the person like loved me, but hated me. Like they wanted to smother me with a pillow until I was dead, but they would be like sobbing the whole time. Yes. Even between our friend group, we all have different styles, but we still follow similar trends, but you have to have your own originality. Absolutely. And that's the thing. It's like, I have seen people, uh, have I seen friends of ours wear belly chains or rosaries or white skirts? Of course. Yeah. Have I ever thought that they were copying me? No, because they do it in their own way and they're just like participating in a trend. I think the difference is when it becomes somebody's whole personality and that's what happened here was she stole her entire personality. That's crazy. That was a great story. I was I was so into it. Should we get into our final caller? Let's do it. Alrighty. So this is a cautionary tale to always lock your door, especially if you have a golden retriever boyfriend. <laughs> so to set the scene, it's maybe 2 a.m. on a Saturday night. 
but it's a very chill Saturday night. Cause I've where, are, prob- where are we though? Oh, good question. So we're in New York at my apartment. Mm. A little context is I do live in a four unit apartment. So there is, you know, one big building, four separate apartments within it. So, so you have like an entrance that is just available from the street. It's not like you have to like go up an elevator and all that. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. There's one, there's a set of double locked doors, um, at the main street. And then the inside there are four apartments, which, you know, hypothetically should be locked as well. Again, it's probably about 2 AM on a Saturday night, but I've already been in bed for a couple of hours. It was an early night for me. And I'm currently living with my boyfriend and a very naughty dog. And when I say naughty dog, I mean a four-year-old dog that thought all men besides those he saw every day were the devil, and he would react accordingly. (laughs) Okay, which is honestly kind of nice. Yes, I agree. That's what I want out of a dog. We love a protective king. Um, So that's kind of my living situation at the moment. And the story really starts when I wake up because my boyfriend got up in the middle of the night to go pee. Um, Obviously, I thought nothing of this. I get up to pee two to three times a night, I'd say on average. So I just rolled back over and I was trying to get back to sleep. I would say my boyfriend was gone for maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, who knows. But he comes back in the bedroom. He strips himself of all of his clothes, including his boxers, and just gets into bed butt naked. And again... And is, I this, think, is this usual for him? It's you, you know, it's not, but I don't think anything of it because I'm not one to judge if you don't want to wear underwear to bed. Um, I mean, it wasn't a hot night. I was in a sweatsuit, so I wasn't expecting anything to happen in a romantic way. But I'm like, you know what? You do you. You can be completely naked in bed. Why not? But then here's the kick to the story is all of a sudden I look up. And I see my boyfriend standing in our doorway to our bedroom. So my first thought is, okay, I think I'm having a dream. Maybe I'm seeing things. It's the middle of the night. But then I realize I am very much awake. And this is not my naked boyfriend in bed with me. (gasps) (laughs) Yeah. What? (laughs) Who's the naked man? And where's the dog? So, yeah, again, great questions. So when I see that my boyfriend is in our doorway and uh, he turns on the light to our bedroom because he notices there is someone in bed. And I would also like to note, like, he was literally gone for no more than two minutes. So the perfect timing that this happened, I I don't understand. Um, But basically what happened was my boyfriend turned on the light. We see this man and certainly shocked. My boyfriend goes, um, what the fuck? And the guy shouts something along the lines of, hey, man, turn off the lights. And uh, my boyfriend does. (laughs) Not him trying to get a good night's sleep. (laughs) Not the audacity. Not the audacity of my boyfriend turning off the lights when this naked man asks him to because he's. He is the definition of a yes man who is so nice and kind to people, but I was he's not like, expecting he's like, that. <laughs> he's like, you're right. I'll yell at you with the lights off. <laughs> so um, the naked man runs to his pile of clothes that are like on the floor in our room. He runs out of the room and you hear our apartment door just slam. Um, like Gabby mentioned and asked, uh, please keep in mind that this whole entire time, my dog, who was a very bad boy at the time, was in the bed with me, didn't make a single peep. What? Notice. So it wasn't just me who thought that was my naked boyfriend in my bed. Um, my dog also didn't notice, which I don't understand because. Yeah. Wouldn't he like (laughs) smell a different body? You know what I mean? You would really think so. What did your boyfriend say after realizing what was going on? Or what did he do? We both just kind of looked at each other. He got up, locked our apartment door, and then we just went back to bed. (laughs) What? Oh, my God. Um, But I can say to this day, I don't forget to lock my apartment door before going to bed anymore. Wait, you you guys didn't call the cops? (laughs) Okay, so a little more context to the story, which, again, it's a lot of it's just our assumption But my boyfriend wanted to make sure it was known that he knew it wasn't a dangerous situation and merely a drunk one. So this is our kind of guess at what happened. Um, Earlier in the story, I mentioned how, you know, I live in a four-unit apartment. 
Uh, there's a main door off the street. And what we think happened is because those doors are double locked, we believe maybe this naked man was a friend of someone within the apartment. We're ah. thinking he was very drunk. We're thinking maybe he went to the bathroom and instead of going back to wherever he was sleeping at the other apartment, he wandered out into the hallway and somehow found himself in our bedroom. Yeah, we were not friends with our neighbors. In. Yeah, we weren't friends with our neighbors, so we never even asked anyone. Looking back, I was in like, I was probably 20 years old. I think I'm a little smarter now to give myself a little more credit. I think I would have like, yeah, maybe talk to my neighbor. Said, did, does, and did anyone have a guest over last night? You trusted that the situation wasn't dangerous and it was more like a silly, this man stumbled into the wrong apartment. Um, yeah, at least I'm going with that because I know this could have turned out a very, very different way. Um, yeah, it's in the news <laughs> the, the following day. Man, man, naked man kills couple. Yeah, well, like the thing too is there's always like two versions of that story, even in LA, where it's like mm-hmm. somebody breaks in because they're just like either like on drugs or mentally ill or drunk, and it's like a more right. of a confusion thing. And then there's obviously like the scarier version of that. Yeah, and yeah, I do think that there's a difference between like you said, like a confusion thing, or even if it was like a drugs or like just looking for somewhere warm versus somebody who was like going in to do something bad. Imagine how he felt at like you know, the next morning hungover. Yeah. He kind of remembers. <laughs> I mean, like, you must have had, like, some sort of, like, remembrance of what happened there that, like, oh, like, someone turned the light on me and I had to run out of an apartment. Like, I had enough, like, you know, knowledge to grab my clothes before I left. Like, I <laughs> I don't know. Is, oh, my God. I literally love that story. Yeah. The easiest the f- part about that story to me is your boyfriend turning the lights off oh. and asked. Oh, I, I know. He, he's heard – He's heard my point of view on that for so long. I'm like, are you kidding me? And, and and again, his point of view is he knew it was in a dangerous situation. But I'm just like, he, there's a naked man in bed with me. You think you'd make a bad assumption. You think this guy's here to harm someone. But he's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I understand. I, I'm a little modest, too. I'm sure you don't want to be seen uh, in the light just <laughs> butt naked. But, wow. That um, was an amazing story. Thank you so much for calling in and sharing. You are very welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> All right, Bye. guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye. That story was equal parts amazing and also really terrifying. I love the fact that the boyfriend turned off the lights to, like, respect, be like, Oh, yes, you're right, Sarah. How dare I turn on the lights to confront you? Honestly, I it's crazy because you never know like what you're going to really do in those situations. You think you know, but then when you're in them, you know, it's like you are different. You're so right because I'm over here talking my shit, but like I think I'd be stunned. I'd be stunned too. And if somebody was just like, do this, I think I'd be like, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um. Also her telling that story with like no fear and just doing it as a funny thing. Like I feel like she's a bad bitch and I loved that story. If you are watching this video on YouTube, please leave it a like. If you are listening on any of your podcast platforms, please leave it a good review. It really helps out the show. Um, And we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.